Hello people, welcome to my channel. My name is Hilary and today I will be starting my May reading vlog. So uh, if you are following me, uh, then you might see that this is a new bookshelf. Uh, I bought it, but it's not uh, fully... Uh, everything isn't organized fully yet, but I just threw most of my unread books in here. Some of them, the Supernatural and the Angel series, are in another bookshelf and uh, the old one that I have here that I moved to my bedroom and I haven't organized those either so I have still a couple of things to buy and a couple of things to arrive for here and I will be doing a special video for all of this. But to start with my May reading I have already <laughs> finished two books so I'll start first with the second one because it was a quite short book and that was uh, Eternal Phoenix by Stacey Reed and this is a series I have been rereading it because I'm hoping that, that I heard somewhere that the new book is coming out this year it hasn't been uh, updated that series from the 2019 year and honestly I want to see where it goes uh, but I don't have uh, a lot of faith in that but at least I again catch up with it uh, remember more of the plot so the last um, the series on a, on its own is it's on another planet that is connected to portals with different worlds including earth but uh, they have I think six or seven different countries and each of the country has their own powers for example we have the uh, people who can basically use their voice as a superpower and uh, attack people with that and then we have uh, the trackage that are basically hosting within them some demons or myth mythical creatures that power they can use and so on and so on and this is just a little bit over 100 pages a short story about one of the princesses and uh, the phoenix it in her holes inside of her and uh, she find, finding her mate it's a really short story and i I had several, I gave three stars, I had several questions about it because as much as we know about the trackage and those creatures, uh, it went a lot uh, conflicted with those because usually it takes a lot to get the power of the demon and lots of people suppress it and never use it and so on, so I wasn't a fan. <laughs> and the first book I read this month is Prince Lestat and Terms of Atlantis by Anne Rice. This is the one before the last book of the Vampire Chronicles, so I'm so close to the end and I think the last book, Blood Communion, is like 200 pages, so I haven't gotten that physically, but uh, I think I'm gonna read it this month, reorder it, or, uh, or maybe reading it next month, I don't know yet, depends on how everything goes, but I'm so conflicted with this book. If we go by the Vampire Chronicles on its on its whole, we have the first trilogy, the three first books. We have the interview with the vampire, the vampire Lestat, and the Queen of the Damned. I personally hated the first book. I do not like Louise. I hate him. <laughs> I absolutely hi minion. What are you doing? I absolutely love Lestat. I love the second book, and I enjoyed. The third book for its history. After that we get several books and they're very very boring. So uh, all of the books except the last three that are a newer addition to the series, uh, we the, all the books are very similar basically we get the first 100 pages something drastically happens then we get about 300 pages or so where they are just talking, debating about the philosophy, whether God exists and so on. And that is the most hardest to get through. And then at the end of the last pages, we get more action. Uh, Lestat is being awesome if Lestat is in that book and I'm enjoying the book immensely. <laughs> so there has been some of the books I really, really enjoy. I love the story of Merrick. Uh, not all of the books are from Lestat point of view, although I think Merrick somewhat is. Uh, then we have the Armand and Marius's stories within their own books and I enjoyed them for the historical sake and their life on their own. 
and the rest, I think Blackpool Farm was okay also, but the rest aren't very good. Then we get to the three new books from which two I have now read. The first one was just Princess Dance, and that honestly I didn't like it. We go back to uh, the original story about the spirit that inhabits inhabited Akasha and their sacred core and uh, things happen and honestly it, it was okay it wasn't the best book uh, but it kind of also followed a lot with the same way that the previous ones were uh, the previous storylines the same way but this this is a completely different story from everything like absolutely if you take the genre up to this point we are having a fantasy book and this one is a mixture of science fiction and fantasy doesn't matter that the science fiction part isn't very is a little bit weird but this is a good mixture of science fiction and fantasy uh the way the book is uh, built is a way different than all the previous books so honestly it didn't feel for me that it is from the same like series as the previous books because everything else except the first trilogy is very similarly built so you can see the differences straight away and honestly if we take it as part of the series i didn't enjoy it i think it went too far it didn't go well with the series or what has happened previously but if you take this book just as a separate one it has entertainment value and by entertainment value i mean pure comedy uh, I might get slightly into spoilers, but I'm also guessing most people will read the series, plus it's just tiny details, so I'm not giving away anything specific to the story. But it says Realms of Atlantis, so we will be the storyline will be dealing with the lost city of Atlantis. And I think like in the prologue or the first chapter, we find out that there are these creatures who are also immortal and they are the Atlanteans <laughs> and uh, I'll go for a couple of details and then I'll go a little bit more into a spoilery section so uh, there were a couple of like really funny places where uh, one of the Atlanteans hand was chopped off and that hand was thrown into the fire and then that hand came back out of the fire by itself it had eyes and a mouth on the palm and it started sucking the owner's nipple and the owner blacked out so i was at that moment like what am i reading what is going on my husband i wrote that scene to my husband and he had a theory about that which was correct so plus point for him i didn't even think about that because i was really without by that scene and there were some more situations like that that was like what is going on i'm not sure uh for the spoiler section so basically the science fiction part is that the atlanteans are actually aliens and uh, they were sent they were created firstly they're not humanoids they were created to really resemble um, mammalians but they actually don't have any of the organs or the inside is different and they were created by the so-called parents uh, who are birth people and they said that uh, the time when the meteorite uh, came killed most of the uh, creatures on the earth and the mammalians uh, went to the, be the prevalent uh, species that this was wrong this isn't how the evolution is supposed to go and uh, the true evolution was supposed to be when the birds uh, became the pre prevalent species of uh, our history and what they wanted is that uh, those people uh, to go to earth and make a new catastrophe to happen so the birds could uh, rule the world as it's natural and i'm like what <laughs> yeah and what well, is a funny thing that after they were sent to earth we know nothing else about the parents are they still alive did they somehow die nothing and so it did actually like there's a lot of books with the so-called science fiction fantasy books for example frost eater that i uh, read by Gar 
Harold Beth Anderson that says it's a science fiction fantasy, but the only thing that it is a science fiction part is that it's taking place in another planet, but they don't have any of the technology for some reason, something happened, so they're basically back in the Stone Age or something similar. Uh, so I wouldn't call it science fiction fantasy when they have the fantasy part, the magic, but none of the science fiction, except that they are in another planet. Um, uh, but this has actually science fiction parts. So I, as I said, I actually enjoyed the book and I really like some of the quotes in this. Uh, I read them. I sometimes write the quotes, but uh, none of the names of the books. Uh, there is only one reason we need one power and that's to keep others from having power over you. All you have to lose in that, no matter how long you live, is the present moment in which you die. To die or not to die, that is the question. It is nobler to live in torment and rage than not to live at all. So I really like some of the quotes and parts and uh, the philosoph philosophy that is in this book and what they're debating over. And I did get teared up because I love this so much. So as a book of itself, I can say I immensely enjoyed it. But as part of Vampire Chronicles, I think this is the worst book of the series as it doesn't fit that one at the series at all and it's so different. So we'll see what the last book brings. But that's about it for now. I am starting, I think, The Empress of All Seasons. Uh, so for the se Seth's uh, last, final, last final book, Blah, blah, ser book of series, final book, blah, blah, something. Uh, I will be doing it for the whole month and I'm giving some of my shorter books for the Becca's book, book of play. Maybe I can get them there. But I think I'm going to try to read Empress of All Seasons and then next week uh, start with The Burning God of RF Kong and finish that series. And then I'm really happy if I've gotten to The Burning God and this book. So I am hopefully smashing my main tibia. So. Today is the 12th of May, so I'm not doing this vlog very well. I did get uh, the very low and low grade and we're combining, I think, this month. So at least I have those videos, but I haven't read a lot. So previously I mentioned I finished the Prince Lestat and the Realm of Atlantis and and now I have finished The Empress of All Seasons. I did read it a little bit slower than I expected it. So I'm pretty sure my May TBR is uh, pretty fucked up. But I found that The Empress of All Seasons is a really surprising and surprisingly nice and interesting story. So this is about inspired by the Japanese uh, mythology and uh, there is the world where there are living regular humans and uh, emperor is a human and then we have different mythological creatures, yokai, uh, who have been colored, most of them, and the priests also have these symbols and uh, chants or curses they have so uh, they can temper their powers and that is why uh, this is like a balance meant to be however the colors uh, put the humans in advance and they they basically use uh, yokai as slaves and we have our main character mari who is a animal wife that is she has an animal inside but also they are uh, really really beauty beautiful in most cases and uh, they usually find a husband, marry them, and then I think uh, whether it just steal their fortune or kill them and steal their for fortune. I honestly can't remember which, which it was. And however, she isn't the prettiest, so the mother says that uh, a prince will look for a wife and there will be a competition going through uh, all four of the season rooms. So we have summer, spring, winter, and autumn. And if she wins all of them, then she will become the empress and can steal the emperor's fortune. Uh, however, this is a lot about finding out who you are, what you're meant to be, but also there is a very big plotline about being a woman in a man's world and uh, just uh, 
what to do with men as a female, but also about freedom. So I really, really enjoyed it. I found really good quotes in the book. I can read you a couple of them. Porcelain balls faded and gathered dust. Women and men grow old. Their faces lined with age. With time, all things withered, except your spirit. The soul always remained. Uh, men are conditioned to take. Women are conditioned to give. Never let the man take anything from you. Your, sh your smiles, your humor, your body. So it had a lot of these kinds of uh, quotes and I really enjoyed it. I was really surprised how much I enjoyed it, especially I don't like YA all the time, but I also really appreciate some of the stories. Uh, however, the I'm not happy about the ending. There was one trope used that I absolutely hate, but I can't say it out loud because it's spoilers. And also the ending was really, really rushed, so we had a big battle at the end. And everything else that happened would have loved to see something. It, it was like a two-page uh, conclusion to that, just like somebody looking over them. So um, I would have loved to see a little bit more of that, but uh, what you can do. So that's why I gave it four or 4.5 stars, uh, but I was, I did deduct a little bit because of uh, the ending and there were the Mary Sue type of things that, uh, you know nothing, you're really scared at everything, and then boom, and you're the master fighter. So, uh, and also because of that trope, but uh, but I did give it a little bit higher because I really, really enjoyed the whole story. And for now, uh, I'm not doing very well with uh, Steph's uh, final book, last book. Uh, support group uh, but uh, so i was thinking about whether to start the burning god but uh, since i do have a couple of like semi short books on my list i decided that i'm gonna go with the ivory key right now and maybe also i will read gallant and then i'm going to the burning god So, sorry if I'm looking a little bit of a mess, but I finished the last book I wanted to finish uh, before ending this vlog, and I read Canon by Lee Schwab, and I do have to say I absolutely enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. So I know a lot of people were... <laughs> Lee Schwab is very loved author in the booktube community and in the world on the whole but also she has written quite a lot of uh, different kind of books and some people like some of them and some people enjoy others more for example i think the darker shade of magic series is one of her most well loud one i read that series years ago i thought it was an okay series although i didn't like the ending 
Uh, there is the, also the vicious uh, book and that storyline. I haven't read that, and that should be like a villain origin story or really moral, great morally great character storylines. But I have read uh, the New Rich uh, previously, although I look up in the series, and I know a lot of people don't actually enjoy it. But I loved the vibes, this like old time story feeling. It wasn't the best, but I loved the, re the vibes really much. And Gallant, in my opinion, has very similar feelings. So this is about a girl who, for some reason, we don't know why, uh, can't speak. And most people don't uh, know the sign, sign language. So it's really hard for her to communicate with other people because she doesn't like to write all the time and some people also can't read that well and she is in a all girls uh, foster not foster home orphanage basically and there will be a letter that uh, her uncle is missing her however when she uh, arrives to Kaland that is the place uh, she discovers that the uncle is passed away and something strange is going on in the house and it is uh, 300 pages so it's not too long it has really short chapters about five pages uh, long uh, so it's a really fast easy read uh, what I really loved was the dark atmosphere the old story kind of vibe that had the near uh, which also has and also what I thought was really brilliantly written was that there are two storylines actually. The whatever is taking place with Olivia, the main character, and also there is her mother's uh, there is her mother's journal that she has. And uh, we get snippets from that journal and uh, throughout the books and also the pictures that we have here like these are also from her mother's journal so we are also piecing together what happened to her mother uh what happened in Galland and also seeing that but we get the snippets and in the middle of the book we get uh, basically we're putting together the whole story and i really really love that i think if you take these two books that this one is way way better better written uh but more better done but both are very nice i love both of them so um, this is also the end of the uh, last book, Sport Club. And honestly, I didn't do very well. I did read uh, The Prince of Staten and Thrones of Atlantis. So I'm almost finished with that series. I haven't done <laughs> read any more books or series. So I did read a couple of standalones. But I think I'm doing quite good. I am starting The Burning Cult by RF Guan. So I do want to finish that series and I'm gonna definitely do that. I do have a couple of more books on my list. So I have uh, The Wife Upstairs and I have no problems finishing that one. And then also there is The Great Hunt, which might be a slightly problematic because I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna finish it this month. Um, and also, I wanted to read Incendiary and Illusionary, so maybe I'm gonna forego with The Great Hunt and try to read it next month, and maybe read Illusionary and Incendiary instead. I don't know, we'll see how that goes. But that's about it for this vlog. I do hope you enjoyed it, and bye!